All right, we move ahead to the first fighter to make multiple appearances on What the Heck. He joined us for episode two, and now Chaos has returned to the program. Let us check in with Colby Chaos Covington after a crazy week of fights in Jacksonville. Colby, thanks for doing this. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, man. Can't ever complain, man. Living the American dream. Just uh, thankful for everything I have and, and everything that's coming my way in the future. Well, we, we know you had your opinions on how these fights might go over the last week with videos you posted leading in, which is just something else to, to watch, by the way. But how did you do at the virtual betting window, so to speak, during the, the trio of events in the Sunshine State? I did pretty well, you know. I, I definitely made some money. You know, not all my picks. I mean, not all the, the picks that I publicized and put out there on social media won every bet. But, hey. I'm not supposed to be the best picker in the world, Mike. I'm the best fighter in the world, so I'm sorry. I can't be the, you know, I'm trying to be the best at multiple things in the world, but betting is unpredictable. Anything can happen. So, you know, I just want to apologize to the people that that I steered wrong and, and didn't give the right answer to. And, and you know, anything can happen in a fight, you know, that's as real as it gets. And, uh, you know, it's okay because we're going to get some Trump bucks soon and, and Trump's going to send us out another stimulus check and we're all going to be gravy. There you go. But you made a couple of bucks to the betting window, so that's all that matters. But uh, I'm curious, were, were there any performances in particular that stood out to you? Like, of course, Justin Gaethje became the interim lightweight champion after defeating Tony Ferguson. That one sticks out in a lot of people's minds. But who would be, I guess, your MVP overall from these three events? Uh, you know, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I'll be honest, Mike, I, I didn't pay attention to the events. You know, I just I had no interest in them. You know, the no fans thing, that's boring enough as it is. And None of the fighters, you know, excited me for the fights. Of course, I'm going to make, you know, some predictions, you know, for my betting website that I'm sponsored by, but mybookie.ag, thanks to the best, uh, undisputed best sports book in the world, mybookie.ag, shout out to them and, and how it's their clothing, you know, they're, they're doing good things for the troops and our heroes of America. So big shout out to them as well. When you were last on here, you said that, you know, you wanted to be the guy, the guy to bring sports back in everyone's life. So as these fights cards are being booked, is there a part of you that's like, damn, like this should have been my spot. This is my place to bring the sport back. Yeah, it was my opportunity to bring the sports back, the sports world back. But, you know, Dana White and the UFC dropped the ball. They know if they handed me the ball, you know, I'm running into the end zone. I'm getting a touchdown. But, you know, they're afraid to give me the ball. But, you know, that's why they're not getting the type of results that they want. You know, if they were. If they really want to make the biggest fights possible, then I have to be in them, you know, and I, I need to be at the top of the marquee. And if, if it's not there, then, you know, the fans aren't going to be interested in it, you know, and you need to give the, the fans what they want and and are begging for, you know, even all my haters, the people that don't want to see it, you know, they still want to see me lose, but it's never going to happen again, especially under a level playing field without Mark Nussel Goddard in there, who's anti-Brexit and a liberal little cuck. And he cheated me out of a world title. So next time is going to be completely different. You haven't seen the, the best of me yet, Mike. I'm, I'm still 32 years young. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So Marty Fake Newsman, he can he can keep ducking me as long as he wants. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be right here. And I guarantee there's going to be a sequel. There's going to be a trilogy to that fight. You know, and last time I was on here, we were talking about Drew McIntyre. You know, Mike, now you, you signed a man's death certificate. You know, I mean, now you're going to have to get Drew McIntyre's blood on your hands. Because now he's talking all crazy out there like he wants to fight in an unsanctioned fight. I'm not afraid of a fight, man. I love to fight, you know. So, you know, usually, it, you know, it's a, the world is a strange place right now, Mike. You know, usually I can find anybody whenever I want. Just ask Dana White. But the world's a strange place. So I'm having a hard time finding Drew McIntyre. I'm going to find him soon. You know, the only person that I've never been able to find is Tyrone Woodley. He's out there, you know, just completely ducking me, having midlife crises on Twitter. He's over in the corner begging for change from the UFC. He'll fight anybody, you know, so he's going to fight a guy named Dilbert. So l let me ask you this, because there's a lot to unpack there, Colby. You, a lot a lot to get into, but let's, let's start with Woodley and let's start with the UFC. You said the UFC dropped the ball because you told me a month and a half or so ago that you wanted that fight with Woodley. You wanted it bad, or you would have taken the rematch with Kamara Usman. And obviously, like you just mentioned, Woodley is slated to fight Gilbert Burns on May 30th in the main event of that card. So you and Woodley, I, I still don't understand how this fight hasn't come together. It's the fight everybody wants to see. He's come out and said that you've wanted upwards of five million dollars to take that fight. So what happened? Why did we not get this fight? 
Uh, you know, to be honest, Mike, the real reason we didn't get this fight is because the UFC didn't want to give him the fight. You know, the thing is, is his last fight, he looks so washed up, Mike. The UFC wants to see if he has anything left in the tank, you know, so they want to see if he can prove himself to earn the losing ass whooping paycheck to me. So, you know, this is a test by the UFC that, you know, they're making him fight some kid named Dilbert. You know, no one even knows who Dilbert is. So, you know, we'll see if he passes that test and he can earn this this ass whooping losing paycheck to me. But, you know, who knows, man? I mean, he's doing a lot of things out there. You know, he's trying to rap. I mean, he's hurting people's ears, dude. He's a freaking dork. Were we close at all on this like second go around? Were we close at like using a baseball analogy? Were we even rounding seconds at all? Were we close at all? Yeah, we were very close. I, I thought we had the main event when Khabib and Tony Ferguson fell through. I thought for sure, hundred percent, I was going to be the main event. But then that date got scrapped, and they moved it to three weeks later to Jacksonville, and then they inserted Justin Gagey, you know, with Tony Ferguson because they wanted to keep him there. So. You know, after that happened, you know, and they, they already had their other main events for the other two cards. I don't know what happened. You know, I, all I know is we're still in negotiations with the UFC. You know, they're talking to my agency, uh, Balanji Group and, and Lloyd Pearson, super manager. So, you know, the, I know, I know they're trying to get a deal done, but they know I want the biggest fights possible, Mike. I earned that and I deserve that, you know. So anything less would be a disappointment and, and I'm not and I'm not wasting my time. Is it fair? Would you say that the Woodley ship has sailed at this point or do you still want that fight? I mean, I know it's like a personal thing for you, but if you're looking for the biggest fights possible and, you know, you, it doesn't seem like you, you're looking very fondly upon Gilbert Burns right now. Would you say that ship has sailed and you're moving on at this point? Uh, you know, it's it's a long heated rivalry. You know, it sucks that it was never made before. I think the, the UFC really dropped the ball with it. You know, it was a big fight. You know, the you got, you know, the, the left and the right, you know, you got. You got uh, red and blue, you know, liberal versus Republican. I mean, everything, you know, the, the backstory of, of us both training at ATT together and, and uh, you know, having a history together, you know, him flying me out to training camps to beat him up before he got beat up by Roy McDonald. So, you know, it's, it just sucks, you know, but he never wanted to fight me, man. I'm the first guy to ever scare the champion into elective surgery, elective surgery, Mike. The guy was ready to fight Nate Diaz, some lightweight scrub wash up. You know, we know he's the Stockton soy boy. He was ready to fight him, but he won't fight Colby Chaos Covington when I had the, the real welterweight championship, the people's championship, America's championship. More importantly, Donald Trump's favorite fighter. So, you know, Tyrone Woodley doesn't want to fight and, and the people know that. And, you know, we're moving on from that. Did you see, uh, I know you, you said you didn't really watch the fight. You weren't all that interested in him, but did you see the, uh, the appearance of, of the president at the beginning of the UFC 249 prelims on ESPN? Uh, no, man, I, I honestly didn't watch the fights at all. You know, I was, I was busy hanging out with chicks, you know, enjoying life, you know, living, living the mansion, uh, uh, party life, you know? So, you know, I'm out enjoying my life. I don't got time to watch, you know, a bunch of uh, a gatekeepers in the UFC that don't draw and nobody cares about, you know, it's, it's so, you know, but you know, if we're talking about our great president, I would have definitely tuned in if I would have known he was going to be on, you know, just the things he's doing for this country are unbelievable during this time, you know, and, and, uh, he's done everything he said he was going to do. And now, now he's exposing freaking Obama for being the corrupt, you know, last president in office and, and maybe the most corrupt president ever in office. So, Obamagate, Obamagate. In these crazy times, nothing is set in stone, right? Like, especially now, because it seemed like all paths were leading towards a fight between two of your good buddies, Kamara Usman and Jorge Mazadal for the welterweight title. And Dana White said in an interview with Brett Okamoto that he may have, quote, something else interesting for Mazadal. So, we don't really know what the hell's going on right now. But my question is, from your perspective, do you factor into this equation at all? Everybody knows I factor into every equation. I mean, uh, I'm the biggest draw in the division. I made this division great again. You know, those guys, those guys are both wash ups. They're scrubs. No one, no one cares about them because they're fake. They're, their personalities are, you know, they try and act like good guys in the camera, but really behind the camera, they're, they're pieces of shit. You know, they're cheaters, they're liars, you know, they're just, they're not good people, but you know, Let's be honest, Mike. You remember at the Super Bowl when they, they tried to manufacture that fake hype? They, like, pushed each other at the Super Bowl. Oh, come on. What is that, in February? 
If they wanted to fight, they would have fight, fought, Mike. Let's be honest. That was February. What, February, March, April, May. That's four months. You tell me all that manufactured hype. Oh, we're going to fight each other. Marty Fake Newsman versus Street Judas Masvidal for the world title, which everybody knows is the fake title. It's the paper title. It's, it's you know, it's the corrupt title because I was cheated out of the real title and everybody knows I'm the real champ. So if they wanted to fight, they would have fought, Mike. But they don't want to fight. You know, Marty's looking for that easy payday. I don't blame him. Keep keep looking, you know. But Street Judas Masvidal thinks he's he's the hottest thing since sliced bread in the UFC. Dude, you're 50-50, man. You're, you're a journeyman. You're getting you're getting upside down triangle by guys named Toby Imada, beaten up by Baboon, beaten up by lightweights, beaten up by by featherweights, bantam weights. I mean, the guy's got like 15 losses. He's a journeyman, dude. He's got, you know, it's it's pathetic that that he even claims to be one of the best fighters in the world. I mean, he was just getting beat up by Damian Maya, Stephen Wondergirl Thompson less than a couple of years ago. I mean, so, you know, he doesn't want to fight. He's, he's waiting for Conor McGregor and Conor McGregor doesn't give a shit about him. I mean, you saw with Conor at the fight when he beat up Cerrone, he would have called George out. He was front row in his little bathing suit, freaking his little bathing robe. Oh, I'm in my Gucci bathing robe, robe I'm, or bathing suit or back robe or whatever the fuck he was wearing. But it's a cool fucking gimmick, dude. Journeyman George Masvidal hit lightning in a bottle, and he's trying to capitalize right now. And and to be honest, you know, he's not going to capitalize because he dropped the ball on the on the Marty Fake Newsman fight, and Connor doesn't want to fight him. So who's going to fight Journeyman? Would you be interested in the Masvidal fight right now? Because obviously there's some there's some heat here. Um, is that a fight that's on your list? Like I know Usman's probably at the top of your list right now. You really want that rematch, but is, does Masvidal make that short list for you? A hundred percent. Me and Street Judas Masvidal are a hundred percent going to fight before it's all said and done. We we might fight a couple times because if I see him in the street, it's going to be a fade session. He's going to get put on the concrete. I'm going to drop him on his fucking head and put stitches in the back of his head. It's not going to be nice, Mike. I promise you that. And, and he knows that deep down inside. He knows, but he's willing to take a paycheck in the UFC to get his ass whooped because he knows the UFC is going to pay his fucking medical bills. But besides that, if he if if we fight in the street, I'm gonna drop him on his fucking head, and he's never gonna be the same person again because he's gonna be concussed. The concrete's gonna mess with him, and I'll probably kick his teeth in too while I'm at it, just because he's a piece of shit. I mean, I mean the guy's claiming. I mean he's the sucker punch king. You know he's claiming for being out at Denny's and being the dining dash king, dude. You're a piece of shit, man. You're dining and dashing on single mothers that are working at Denny's because. You know, they're trying to put food on the table for their child and, you, and you're you're bragging about being proud of dining and dashing on them. Dude, the guy's the lowest scum denominator of earth and he's the fakest piece of shit. He turned his back on me for money and his management team and, and people are going to find out the real truth about him. I mean, he's going to get exposed soon. I know so much about him and, and it doesn't make sense to come out yet. When we fight, it'll all be built up in the fight. But until then, dude, he's just going to keep being that like, fake piece of shit. And he's going to keep fucking disobeying commands from, you know, ATT chief Dan Lambert and freaking, you know, trying to go above his word like he's better than than Dan Lambert, Dan Lambert's word. Very interesting, because, you know, let's put it this way. Rematch with Usman, title fight, clearly very lucrative. It's a fight you want. You want to get that one back. But Mazadal has become a big star over the last year, whether you. You know, no matter how you look at it, he has become a, a, a very big name in the sport, and that can be very lucrative as well. So let's just say all things are even here, money, all of that. If the UFC called you right now and said, Colby, money's the same, what comes next will be the same in terms of your financial future, what have you, you know, from the from just like a fight component standing by itself, what do you want more, Usman or Mazadal? I want them both in the same night, Mike. That's how pissed off, I, you know? I have such a bad, salty taste in my mouth from my last fight with Marty Fake Newsman just getting cheated by Mark Not So Goddard. Just all the fake fouls and the fouls that did happen, he doesn't call, and the, the bullshit early stoppage when I was clearly still in the fight and intelligently defending myself. So, you know, we're going to run that back. There's going to be a sequel and trilogy with Marty Fake Newsman. But my ex best friend, Street Judas Masvidal, he has a special ass whooping waiting for him. He's for sure going to get, he's talking about me getting my jaw wired shut. Bitch, I never got one thing fucking jaw. Uh, wired shut on my fucking mouth. Never got shit. But when we fight, I promise you, Street Judas, your teeth will be wired shut. I'm going to fucking take you down. I'm going to fucking slice you up with my elbows. And I'm going to break your fucking face with these fucking knuckles. Mark my words, Mike. So if the UFC offers you either of those fights, you're jumping on it. 
jumping on it. My agency, Lloyd Pearson, is signing the paper before the ink can dry. Those are the only fights I want, the biggest fights possible. And the people are going to be fucking super satisfied when they see Colby Chaos Covington version 2.0. I was playing before, Mike. Now I'm fucking serious. I'm not fucking playing around anymore. Now you got you get so many options right now. That's that's what happens. Usman Mazadal, and you mentioned Drew McIntyre. This thing just took off like a like a rocket ship. You said you know, and it started with you just saying that I want to you know I think I'm going to be in the WWE the summer of 2021, and then it's become this whole thing where Drew talks to ESPN and says that he's going to smash your head in, that he's going to shut you up, and he's going to break your jaw like Usman did. He said he'd fight you anywhere in a bar, or whatever. But this took off so quickly. Can you be, like? Are you surprised that? that Drew reacted to this the way that he did? I'm not surprised, you know. He, he sees the way I draw, you know. I'm the king of the UFC right now, you know. I'm the, I'm the most controversial and talked about fighter. Everybody, everybody can't keep my name out of their mouth, you know. I'm living rent-free in every fighter's head. Everybody talks about me and everybody wants to be me. So, you know, the thing with the WWE is everybody thinks that I'm just going to leave the UFC and go over the WWE. No, nah, I can do both at the same time. I'm still young. I'm 32 years young. I'm not even in my prime yet. I'm still getting better every single day, stronger every day, better cardio. And everybody knows how good my cardio is. They call me the cardio king for a reason. So I want to do both at the same time. I want to go whoop Drew McIntyre's ass in an unsanctioned fight, maybe over in Saudi Arabia, maybe in his home country of, of Scotland. And I want to go whoop Marty Fake Newsman's ass and Street Judas Masvidal's ass. And nothing's changing. It's going to happen. Everybody knows I'm a man of my word. Promises made, promises kept, just like Mr. President says. Have you been approached by WWE at all with all this going on? Uh, you know, I haven't been approached like directly by them, but you know, I know they know who I am and I know that there's some rumblings and, and some talkings behind scenes. So I'll leave that up to my management group. You know, I'm just worried about getting better every day, training hard, you know, working on my wrestling moves, working on my fighting moves, just just evolving. You know, I love the process. Everybody knows that. I trust the process and I've always loved the process. I'm not afraid of hard work. You know, I'm a, I'm a blue collared American that, you know, is living the American dream and, and I w had nothing given to me. I had to earn it the hard way, you know, just like the troops are doing it. You know, they're earning it the hard way every day and they're putting, they're sacrificing their lives for our freedoms. You know, those guys inspire me. That's who I fight for the troops and the Trumps. You have to think that uh, all this with Drew put you on their radar a little bit more, I would say. But uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't get your take on something because you are tied to both of these individuals. Have you seen this back and forth on social media between your fellow Oregonian, Chael Sonnen, and your old buddy, John Jones? Have you seen that? And if so, what have you made of this whole thing? No, I haven't really paid attention to that, man. I I've been, I mean, it, as you can see on Twitter, you know, I'm not, I'm not on Twitter a lot. You know, I go on there occasionally when I want to set up business and, and, and I want people to, to, to talk about that business. But other than that, you know, I don't got time to be on social media. You know, I'm not like most of these fighters. Most of these fighters are looking at every down, every comment. Oh, what does this person say? They're looking up in their feelings. You know, that's why they're the ultimate feelings champions looking down every comment, every engagement, this and that. I'm not getting better. I'm not working hard. I'm out trying to make my fans happy, trying to make, my family happy, trying to work hard for my legacy, for my future, you know? So I have a lot of unfinished business, you know, with Marty Fake Newsman, with Street Jewish Masvidal. So until I take care of that unfinished business, I'm not going to be satisfied, Mike. So I need to stay on the grind, keep working hard every single day and earning it every single day. Just like the American, you know, just like every other American. Last thing for me, Colby, and I appreciate the time. Perfect world. And we know how much tougher that scenario is these days. When do we see you back? When will we hear the Kurt Angle theme song once again as you walk down the aisle into that octagon to compete again? Yeah, you know, I, I've been ready since December, so I would love to come back soon. You know, that that ball is in, in UFC's court. You know, that's that's what they need to they need to get the negotiations right and, and we need to get a deal done. We're very close and and you know, we need to we need to get this done. You know, we need to get back in into business and, and let me do my thing, man. Give me the football. Uh, if you give me the ball, I'm running a touchdown UFC. I guarantee that. I'm on the I'm the best I've ever been, and I'm getting better every single day. So anybody that doubts me will be proven wrong very soon. But in a perfect world, you know, by June or July, I'll be back in the octagon on Fight Island or or coaching tough or 
in Vegas at the Apex. It doesn't matter. I just want to put on a show for the people and save the sports world because all these other guys, they're just boring, man, and nobody cares about them. Coach and tough, has that been has that been brought up at all? Because I know Dana said he's going to bring it back. People thought it was dead. Is 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 that a possibility here? I think anything's a possibility. You know, I think to shoot for the stars always. You know, and 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 it's better than shooting for you know the sun. Then you land in a pile of shit. <laughs> what a prof- I was going to say what a professional answer, but then you turned it on me. So nicely <laughs> done, Colby. We made history here. First fighter guest to appear on the show multiple times and it was uh it was great catching up with you as always cole but you and i have been chatting and doing this thing for years now and uh you know it's it's i gotta say honestly people can look at you however you want but however they want and whatever lens they want to but for me as somebody who's been covering this sport you're one of the few guys who early on gave me the chance and i think uh so to see you kind of get up there and, and headline cards and fight for titles and and be an interim champion and all this stuff, it's 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 pretty surreal. I got to be honest with you, seeing that it's it's kind of one of those things you appreciate as a journalist. And we have to be biased and all that stuff, but still, like, you, you got to be a human being too and just be like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Absolutely, man. It's, it's crazy journey we've been, we've been on. You know, we've been at a while and we never gave up. You know, a lot of people give up before they could get to that that good opportunity and they throw in the towel, but you know, we both kept working hard and now we get to do what we love and, and we're just getting started, man. The best is yet to come. There you go, Colby. I appreciate the time very much. Hopefully we get to see you back in June or July and uh, all the best to you during these crazy times. And we'll talk soon. Talk soon, Mike. Take care, brother. Stay safe.